Math last week 32, patterns for powers of 10. Find the value of n in each number sentence. Show how you know. I have three and five tenths, and we need to multiply that by some power of 10 to get 3,500. So I know that I've if I start with a three in the ones place and a five in the tenths place, when I multiply by a power of 10, my digits shift to the left on a place value chart. So I wanna get that three from the ones place to the thousands place. So the three would shift to the tens place, the hundreds place, and then the thousands place. That would be multiplying by 10, by 10, and by 10. The five would move from the tenths place to the ones place, the tens place, and then the hundreds place. We would have no tens and no ones. So to, in order for get, to get our three and five tenths to become 3,500, n would equal three. We would need three shifts to the left. Four and two tenths divided by 10 to the third equals n. If we start with four in the ones place and two in the tenths place, when we divide by a power of 10, our digits shift on the place value chart to the right. So my four, when multiplying by 10, would move from the ones to the tenths. When I multiply by a second power of 10, it would move from the tenths to the hundredths, and then it would move to the thousandths. So this would be dividing by 10, dividing by 10, and dividing by 10 once again. So three um, powers of 10. Now that two would shift three times as well. So that would end up here in the 10 thousandths place. So then that makes my n equal to 0 0.0042, 42 10 thousandths. Measurement conversions. If one meter equals 100 centimeters, then 150 meters equals 150 groups of 100. That would be 15,000 centimeters. If one foot equals 12 inches, then four feet would be 12 groups of four, which is 48 inches. Circle the scaling factor in each problem, then fill in the blank to make the statement true and explain how you know. Seven times five and 89 hundredths compared to seven. Notice the seven is what's on both sides. My scaling factor is that other number that I'm multiplying the seven by. So here's my scaling factor, five and 89 hundredths. Since I'm multiplying by a scaling factor that's greater than one, then I'm going to get a product that's greater than the seven that we just started with. And so I'll say because scaling factor is greater than one. When I multiply seven by one whole, 1.000 is equal to one whole, I'm going to get something equal to what I started with. And again, I can say here, because the scaling factor is equal to one. Now, when I multiply seven by something, if I want a product that's less than seven, I need to be multiplying by a scaling factor that is less than one. So in order to make this scaling factor here, less than one so that the product I get on that side can be less than the seven I started with, I would want my denominator to be any digit greater than two. Any digit greater than two is gonna give me a fraction that's less than one there. Okay, and so that is because that would create a scaling factor less than one. All right. On the back side, multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Sarah's class collected 12 pounds of food for the food drive. Brad's class collected one and one third times as much food as Sarah's class. How many pounds of food did Brad's class collect? 
So here we can see that Sarah's class collected 12 pounds. And if Brad's class collected one and one third times as much, I wanna take 12 pounds and multiply it by one and one third. Now there are a couple ways we could do this. I'm going to choose to use um, a mathematical property here that says, hey, I can take that 12 and I could distribute it to the one and then add that to the 12 distributed to the one third. So 12 times one and one third is the same thing as 12 times one added to 12 times one third. 12 times one is 12 and 12 times one third is 12 groups of one third. It's like me repeatedly adding one third 12 times. That would be 12 thirds. And I know that 12 thirds is the same thing as four holes, because I could pull out three thirds, a hole, four different times. So that's really like saying 12 plus four, and that's 16, 16 pounds. Another way I could have looked at that problem is I could have said, well, I can take my one and one third and I could convert that to a fraction greater than one. And we could say, hey, that's 12 times four thirds. And 12 times 4 thirds, again, is like a repeated addition of 4 thirds, 12 times. And so I would get 48 thirds. And every time I could pull out 3 thirds, that's another hole. And I know I could pull out 3 thirds 16 times. I could also look at that as 48 divided by 3, and that would be 16. So again, that's just another way to solve that same problem. Dividing fractions, 2 divided by 1 fourth. Here I'm thinking, okay, I have two holes. Here's a hole and here's a hole. If I have two holes here and I wanna divide the, each hole into a fourth, because my units would be fourths here, then it's like putting this problem into context here, it would be like me saying, okay, I have my two holes and I'm dividing them into groups of one fourth. How many groups of one fourth can I get from my two holes there. And so we'll see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight groups. Okay, and then lastly, I have one fifth. So I'm gonna start here with a hole and I'm going to break that into five equal parts. And I'm gonna shade in one of those parts. Now I want to break everything into six, six equal parts here. So I'm actually gonna change colors so we can see this just a little bit better here. Now I wanna break this into six equal parts. And so now I need to ask myself, what is one of these parts worth here? And so I can see that that is worth one thirtieth. 